time, I want to encourage you to subscribe. This is where we get to discuss matters medical in the simple language in which we can always understand. You don't need to be a medical person to understand this because our aim is to share this knowledge in the simple way uh, possible so that you get the, we get to share the information as wide as possible and in a simple language which we can always understand. Can you be a more subscriber? I want to encourage you to subscribe. Give a nice comment down below. And if you have not liked the video, by liking, you get YouTube to recommend our videos. Today guys, we are going to talk about a very special thing, a special component. And uh, you remember from our previous video, I talked about a certain mineral uh, called magnesium. Kind of if you have not watched the, the magnesium video, you miss a lot. It's one of our best videos which we did and uh, it was really liked. And today I'm going to talk about something also very special. I'm going to talk about zinc. Zinc, for those of us who have done chemistry, uh, we know it's one of the elements uh, in those uh, periodic table. And it's a very... Uh, I'm going to talk it from the medical perspective of it and it is uh, important in our lives. So, on my introduction part of it, I'm going to talk about zinc. It is a relationship with uh, zinc and it is terone. Uh, we're talking about, uh, in the previous video when I was, talk I was talking about hormonal imbalance in both male and female, I talked about the sterone. So zinc is a, a very great component, uh, which uh, I'm going to share the relationship between zinc and the sterone as a hormone. So guys, sit back and watch. The channel is not Vin, my name is Vincent. I get to share matters medical in a simple language which we can always understand. So zinc and the testosterone relationship is part of our introduction today. So see, the, when we talk about seeing this and uh, uh, coming up with uh, the great thing about zinc, it's, uh, zinc is a very essential component of human health, playing a critical role uh, in immune function. It, uh, zinc plays a very important role in our uh, functioning as a, in the immune system growth and various uh, metabolic processes. So awareness of zinc uh, rich dietary uh, sources, the coconut signs and uh, symptoms of zinc deficiency is a very important component of this uh, zinc thing. So when we talk about uh, uh, zinc and its significance in relation to testosterone, it, uh, zinc plays a very, a very important role in regulation of testosterone and an essential hormone for male reproductive health. So testosterone, I've shared uh, around, around two videos over the testosterone and it is important in our lives. And kindly if you have not watched it, I want to encourage you to go and watch it because this is where I shared a lot of things about this uh, uh, zinc uh, thing. So when we talk about zinc, uh, is a component, a very important component in the testosterone as a reproductive health. And we talk about muscle mass and overall well-being. Zinc participates in a very, uh, a very great way. So when we talk about zinc and uh, testosterone, number one, we talk about uh, testosterone uh, production. And when we talk about uh, testosterone production, zinc is a crucial for the synthesis and the regulation of the testosterone. So in the testes, uh, at that particular point, so it involves in the biochemical processes to produce the testosterone in the testes. So zinc, uh, it helps in the production of the testosterone. Number two is about enzyme function. Zinc acts as a, a cofactor for the enzyme uh, involved in testosterone uh, to regulate, uh, where the now we have uh, zinc acts as a cofactor uh, for several enzymes involving the testosterone metabolism, including it is responsible for converting cholesterol to testosterone. So very important, zinc is a, a cofactor uh, in the enzyme function. Number three is about hormonal balance. Zinc helps maintain proper balance of other hormones that regulate testosterone levels, such as uh, the luteinizing hormone, or what you call LH, and also the, the, uh, the follicle stimulating hormone, or the FSH. The impact of uh, zinc on uh, testosterone so when we talk about the impact of zinc in uh, zinc deficiency in testosterone, 
When we have the, 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 the reduction or the deficiency in the zinc, we have reduced levels. Uh, zinc deficiency can lead to lower testosterone levels. Studies have shown that even marginal zinc deficiency can significantly reduce the serum testosterone concentration. Number two is about infertility. Low testosterone due to uh, zinc deficiency uh, can really affect one uh, in, uh, in a male fertility and can contribute to infertility. So because low testosterone uh, due to the uh, deficiency of zinc, the male infertility comes about affecting the sperm production and uh, quality. Number three is about impaired uh, sexual health. And when we talk about impaired sexual health, we are talking about reduced uh, testosterone at that particular point can lead to decrease, decreased libido, erectile dysfunction, and other issues related to uh, sexual health. So when we have the deficiency of this, supplementation comes handy. And what are the benefits of, uh, of, uh, of this uh, supplementing the, this, uh, uh, this uh, mineral called uh, zinc? Number one, one benefit of uh, supplementation is what we call increased testosterone levels. So supplementing with zinc can help uh, restore normal testosterone levels in individuals with zinc deficiency and they can have a positive impact on uh, overall reproduction and also sexual health of an individual. Number two is about improvement of sperm quality. When with zinc supplementation can be linked to improved sperm count, uh, motility and overall sperm health which can enhance uh, fertility. Also, number three is about enhanced muscle uh, mass and also strength. With adequate uh, testosterone levels, Support, supported by sufficient zinc intake can contribute to the muscle growth, uh, strength, and also physical performance. Number three, and, uh, so the, those three components of increased uh, testosterone levels, improved sperm quality, and also in enhanced mass of uh, the muscle mass and also strength, uh, that's the role of zinc at this particular point. So zinc, uh, especially for men, is very important uh, that it is uh, supplemented if it is in deficiency so that we have our testosterone men being activated. On the data resources of zinc, to support the healthy testosterone levels, it's important to include zinc-rich uh, foods in your diet. I don't know if we know the zinc, uh, the, the source of zinc in our diet. Uh, let me know if you know those uh, sources of food. Number one, when we talk about uh, uh, the sources of zinc, from an, we have animal sources and also we have the plant, uh, uh, plant, uh, plant uh, sources. Those are the food sources. Number one animal source is about animal red meat. Uh, we talk about poultry meat, seafood, especially the, what we call oysters, eggs and dairy products so are also high in this zinc. On the plant sources, we have beans, nuts, uh, seeds, whole grains and fortified uh, cereals because they, they, this can also, the, though with the plant sources we have what you call the bioavailability of zinc from plant sources is lower due to what you call uh, phytates which inhib inhibit the absorption of the zinc. So especially those people who are vegans, they are likely to be exposed to uh, zinc deficiency because of this thing we call phytate which is rich in uh, the animal or in the plant uh, sources so uh, that that should be really be monitored because uh, the bioavailability of this zinc is not or the readily availability of the zinc is not ready for uh, use in the body from the plant sources so uh, be, the, the zinc levels should be monitored, especially those people who are vegetarians or vegans at that particular point because absorption is really down in these, uh, patient, in these uh, clients or patients who are in the, the vegetarian uh, class. So when we talk about, uh, uh, we have what you call recommended daily allowance for zinc. So the RDA of zinc, the RDA of zinc varies by age, uh, sex, and also uh, life stage. We talk about uh, for adults, in the RDA is uh, 11 milligrams per day. 
you are supposed as an adult to take 11 milligrams of zinc per day while for adult women that is in men uh, in women we have 8 milligrams per day uh, and also pregnant and lactating uh, women have higher requirements so they can get higher than 8 or so than 11 milligrams per uh, per day so supplementation saf safety is very important when we are supplementing zinc Zinc supplements can be beneficial for individuals at risk of the deficiency so or the, with low dietary intake. So zinc gluconate, zinc sulfate and zinc uh, citrate are common forms of uh, uh, supplementation. So with the dosage we have, it is important to not to, uh, not to exceed the tolerable upper intake levels So that uh, for zinc which is 40 mg per day. We talked about 11 mg per day for men and 8 mg per, per day for women, but we should not exceed that mg uh, per day to avoid adverse effects such as nausea for vomiting, interference for the absorption of other essential minerals like uh, copper at that particular point. Number three, and supplementation, consultation should be done. Before starting zinc supplementation, it's very advisable to consult with the healthcare provider to determine the appropriate uh, dosage and ensure it is necessary based on individual health needs. So zinc essential is very essential for production of the sterone, like I mentioned, playing a crucial role in male reproductive health and also the overall well-being. So adequate zinc uh, intake through diet supplementation can help maintain the health uh, testosterone levels and also support fertility and enhance sexual and health at, the, at in, uh, that particular point. So ensuring an adequate intake of zinc is very a vital uh, thing in the in, uh, when we talk about hormonal uh, balance uh, in the body. Generally, I'm going to talk about uh, the functions of zinc. Number one, uh, yeah, we talk about immune system. In the immune system, uh, zinc is vital for proper functioning of immune system to help to fight uh, off infections and regulate uh, immune responses. We have enzyme function where now we have uh, uh, zinc acts as a cofactor for over three, 300 enzymes involved in the various metabolic processes. Now, number, th number three is about protein and DNA synthesis. Zinc is essential for synthesis of proteins and also the DNA playing a key role in soil growth and also division. Number four is about the wound healing. Uh, wound healing, uh, zinc is very necessary for pro proper wound healing and also skin integrity. Number five is about growth and development. Zinc is very crucial for normal growth and also development during pregnancy and also childhood and adolescence. Number six is about sense of taste and smell. Zinc is important for maintaining healthy sense of taste and smell. And this is why even when we, have, we had the COVID-19 outbreak, one of the supplementations which were patients with the COVID were put on is zinc because we found out that uh, smell aspect of this patient uh, was really affected. So a healthy sense of taste and smell is maintained by zinc. On the data resources of, for zinc, we talked about uh, animal and also uh, plant sources. When we talk about animal, we talked about poultry, red meat, and also seafood, especially the oysters, and also the dairy pro uh, products like milk. Also, plant sources, we talk about the nuts, the bean nuts, uh, beans, seeds, whole grains, and fortified cereals. So, but uh, there's something we mentioned about the phytates, which is in the vegetables, especially the plant sources. So, zinc is not a very, uh, the, uh, it's not well absorbed from the plants like it is from the animal sources. So, that's something which should be monitored when we talk about something called bioavailability of zinc from the plant sources, it's lower due to the presence of phytates yeah, that inhibit the zinc absorption. How do you know signs and symptoms for zinc deficiency? Uh, well, we, when we talk about uh, the, uh, the, the, the deficiency of uh, zinc in an, in an individual or in uh, the patient, it's very important to note that uh, uh, number one, we have we have around eight uh, signs of uh, deficiency for zinc, and they are, they don't come in that order. But I'm going to name them one to eight. Immune dysfunction is one of them. Increases the susceptibility to infections. When one lacks uh, zinc, is really, really predisposed to infections. 
so immune system dysfunction is uh, uh, exhibited. Growth retardation is one of the things, especially in children, we have standard growth, started, stunted growth in uh, children. Hair loss, what we call alopecia or thinning of the hair, comes about. Also, we have diarrhea, persistent diarrhea, particularly in children. This also a sign of zinc uh, uh, deficiency. Also, delayed wound healing. Poor, when we have slow healing of wound and skin lesions, can be a good sign that zinc it should be put into check. Skin conditions such as dermatitis and other skin uh, conditions uh, can also come up. Loss of appetite, reduced sense of uh, 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 reduced uh, sense of taste and smell also comes up about. So uh, also we have cognitive impairment where we have uh, learning and uh, attention difficulties. Especially for the, 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 the kids, they have a challenge with the, uh, the concentrating in class. So as a sign of this uh, deficiency for uh, this uh, zinc. So complication for zinc deficiency, if uh, left untreated, uh, skin, uh, defi zinc deficiency leads to serious complications, including severe uh, immune dysfunction. We have also, which we now we leading to frequent and severe infections. Also, we have growth impairment. We have developmental delays where cognitive and motor development issues crop up. Chronic diarrhea comes about as a complication because of leading to further nutritional deficiencies and dehydration. So, increased morbidity and mortality. And when we talk about this, particularly in vulnerable population like children and also the elderly. So, on the, when we talk about PDE, we, we we're talking about uh, sildenafil, Viagra, Tadenafil, Levitra, and Stendra. They, they enhance uh, the effects of nitric oxide, uh, can, a natural chemical which produces, which produces the relaxing, relaxation muscle, relaxes muscles in the penis, and also increase uh, blood flow. So, hormonal therapy, or TRT, for men with the sterone level, uh, low testosterone levels can help improve the ED uh, symptoms. This, and this is administered through the injections, patches, gels, or implants. Injectable medication and suppositories, especially what you call alipostadil, this can be injected into the penis or inserted the, as the urethral suppository to enhance the blood flow and induce an erection. So we have alipo, alipostadil which is in, in certain directed to the uh, urethra or and also into the uh, or uh, in, in through the urethra so as a suppository to enhance blood flow and induce an erection number four is about a vacuum uh, erection devices or vds a vacuum pump is used is used to draw blood into the penis and a constriction ring is placed at the maintain the at the base of the the the, the bed to maintain the erection at that particular point. Number five is about penile implants and when we talk about uh, these implants, surgical implants uh, either inf inflatable or malleable rods can be placed in the penis to enhance uh, this erection as a permanent, pro as a, to provide a permanent solution for the, these implants. Number six is about vascular surgery where we, in case of blood flow, the penis is obstructed vascular surgery, that's the surgery of those uh, uh, network of, uh, of uh, blood vessels is done to restore proper blood circulation to the penis. On the lifestyle changes as a form of management, diet and nutrition, eating a balanced diet is rich in fruits, vegetables, and whole grain, lean proteins can improve our health well well-being for ED. Avoiding processed food, excessive sugar, and the health fats is uh, also very beneficial. Also, on lifestyle changes, we talk about exercise. Uh, regular physical activity, especially aerobic exercises, can improve vascular health, blood flow, and reduce ED symptoms. Activities like walking, running, swimming, and cycling are particularly effective. At this particular point, weight management as a lifestyle change is where maintain healthy weight with improved ED. Obesity is a risk. Weight loss through diet and exercise can significantly enhance erectile function. Smoking cessation is very important as a, a lifestyle change. 
So smoke, because smoking damages the blood vessels and restrict blood flow to the penis. So quitting the smoking can improve the ED, uh, can improve the ED as appropriate symptoms and also the overall health of an individual. Alcohol and substance abuse. So we need to limiting alcohol intake and avoiding recreational drugs can help manage ED as these substances interfere with the, the sexual function. On psychological and emotional support, counseling therapy is very important, especially what we call CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy, is particularly very effective. Couple therapy is very important also, where if relationship issues contribute to erectile dysfunction, couples in therapy can improve communication intimacy and also sexual satisfaction. Alternative complementary therapies which come about, we have what you call acupuncture, where some studies suggest that acupuncture may help improve electrical dysfunction, particularly when it has psychological component on it. And also we have uh, some part of it, of our herbal uh, supplements. In our previous video we talked about uh, ginseng or lee arginine, which can be used effectively but this should be consulted with the healthcare provider because this herbal medicine also can interact with other uh, already established management of co some conditions in the patient so regular monitoring and follow-up very important medical checkups regular visits to the healthcare provider to provide the most effective treatment at the dosages and the management side effects is important for you guys that you get to involve your healthcare provider to manage those uh, side effects at that particular point so that uh, you don't get into a complication and also management of underlying conditions such as uh, hypertension high, high cholesterol levels and also uh, diabetes hypertension is very important so that you get to regulate those things uh, so that you get uh, to my when they are managed well the ed is also uh, catered for at that particular point. So there are some researches which has been done on erectile dysfunction and when you talk about uh, erectile dysfunction is a very common phenomenon. From my research I really was surprised. It's a very common condition uh, in our society and it covers a wide area of uh, spectrum areas including the causes, treatments, ecological impacts and preventive strategies. The overview provides the insight into the some key uh, findings and areas of ongoing studies. So when we talk about the epidemiology or the spread in the population and, and prevalence, so research studies indicate that uh, erectile dysfunction is a common condition affecting approximately uh, 30 million men in the United States alone. So prevalence uh, increases with age with about 40% of men experiencing some degree of uh, erectile dysfunction by age of 40 and nearly 70% are by age of 70 and also however uh, ED can affect men of all ages and can be an sign of underlying health issues including the cardiovascular disease and also diabetes. And uh, when we talk about psychological causes and mechanisms, we're talking about vascular causes. Research shows that uh, ED ca can often result from impaired blood flow to the penis due to the atherosclerosis, uh, atherosclerosis or hardening of the arteries and also the vascular conditions. Endo, endothelial dysfunction where the blood vessels do not dilate properly can also be a significant factor. On neurological causes, conditions such as multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's disease, spinal cord injury can disrupt the nerve signals and also for an erection. Hormonal imbalances can also uh, such a, uh, can also uh, because of the low the steroid levels it affects also how one responds to ED. Medication induced ED, especially the hypertensive and depressant and antipsychotics, can lead to ED as a side effect. On psychological effects, we talked about uh, stress, depression, also can be one of the things. On the P treatment efficacy, PDEs inhibitors are uh, PD inhibitors are is a choice of drug for this. Extensive research has demonstrated effectiveness of PD-5 inhibitors like Sredenafil, uh, like uh, Tadalafil, like Vadalafil in treating the electrical dysfunction. This medication improves blood flow to the penis and also uh, effective for many men. Hormonal therapy is also another uh, thing which has been done research. 
where the steroid replacement therapy is done in men with a hypogonadism, uh, hypogonadism or low testosterone levels which can improve the lecture uh, function. Also what we call alpo, uh, what I talked about alpo, alprostate, alp, alprostadil, whether it's, it's which is injected directly into the penis uh, so as a suppository can also be a very effective way of treating the ED. Also vacuum uh, treatments or vacuum erection devices where the clinical trials have validated the effectiveness of vacuum erection devices in producing the erection with the sufficient for sexual activity. Innovative and emerging treatments on the research which has been done, stem cell therapy is one of the emerging, uh, innovative and emerging treatments which suggests that stem cell therapy can hold uh, promise in treating ED by promoting regeneration of damaging tissues and improving the blood flow. Also platelet rich plasma or PRP where studies are investigating the use of PRP injections which involve using concentrated patient zone platelets to improve the healing and also improve erectile dysfunction. Gene therapy where preliminary research in gene aims to address the genetic causes of ED potentially offering long-term solutions by correcting the underlying genetic abnormalities. Also on the lifestyle interventions from the research Exercise and, exercise and diet uh, shows that regular physical activity and healthy diet can improve electrolyte dysfunction with aerobic uh, exercises especially are beneficial for cardiovascular health and also for uh, and reducing the ED symptoms. Weight management, uh, with the studies indicate that weight loss in overweight or a base man can significantly improve the electrolyte function. Also smoking cessation cessation, research support the quitting of smoking to enhance vascular, vascular health. On the psychological and also social, so, psychosocial approaches, we have cognitive uh, behavioral therapy or CBT where we have cl clinical trials which are, have uh, emerged on the treatment of uh, ED, particularly when psychological factors like anxiety and depression are involved. Couples therapy, very important, where research shows that involving partners in therapy can improve the outcomes and also for men with ED and enhancing the intimacy at that particular point. The body of research on erectile dysfunction is extensive and continues to grow, offering valuable insights into the causes and also treatments and management of this condition. So ongoing studies are exploring new treatment modalities and also preventive uh, strategies aiming to improve the quality of life for the affected erectile dysfunction uh, population. If you are experiencing the erectile dysfunction, it's important to consult with the healthcare provider to explore the, these research-based treatment options and develop a personalized management plan. Guys, the channel is Nazvin. Please subscribe. I want to encourage you to like the video because that is the best way in which you get YouTube to recommend our video to the next one. Guys, welcome to our next video. Love you. Peace.